Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode on Dynamic Programming Interview Questions. Today, we're going to talk about a classic problem called coin change. This question shows up all the time in interviews at top tech companies like Google, Amazon, and Meta. It's also a great exercise for learning the core ideas behind dynamic programming. Let's start with the problem description. You're given a set of coin denominations, for example, one, two, and five. You're also given a target amount, say, 11. Your goal is to use as few coins as possible to make up exactly that amount. If you can do it, return the minimum number of coins needed. If it's impossible, return negative one. And here's one important detail. You can use each coin as many times as you want. For example, let's say we want to make 11 using coins of one, two, and five. One way is to use one five coin and three two coins. That's four coins in total. But we can do better. If we use two five coins and one one coin, that's only three coins. And in fact, three is the minimum possible. So the answer is three. Here's another example. If the coins are only four and five, and we still want to make 11, there's no combination that adds up exactly to 11. So in that case, the answer is negative one. Now, how do we solve this problem? A lot of people first think of using a greedy strategy. Just always pick the largest coin first. That might sound reasonable. For instance, to make 11 with one, two, and five, we'd grab two five coins and then a one coin. Boom, three coins total. Seems perfect, right? Well, not always. Let's look at a counterexample. Say the coin denominations are one, three, and four, and the target is six. If we go greedy and pick the largest coin first, that's four, we'll be left with two. The only way to make two is with two one coins. That's three coins total. But the best solution is actually two three coins. That's just two coins, so greedy fails here. What we need is a more reliable approach, and that's where dynamic programming comes in. Let's talk about the bottom-up or tabulation method first. Imagine a table, an array called DP, with indices from zero up to 11. Each slot DPI will represent the minimum number of coins needed to make up the amount I. At the beginning, we fill every cell with infinity. That just means we haven't found a way to make that amount yet. The only exception is DP0, which is zero because it takes zero coins to make zero. Now let's try to fill in this table step by step. DP1 is one because we can just use a single one coin. DP2 is also one because a single two coin works and it's better than two one coins. DP3, we could use a two coin and a one coin or three one coins. The first option uses fewer coins, so DP3 is two. What about DP4? Let's list out the options. We could use two two coins or one two and two one S or four one S. Two two S is the best, so DP4 is two. You can probably see where this is going. At first, listing out all combinations might work. But as the target amount gets bigger, the number of possibilities explodes. We need something smarter. So instead of brute forcing every combination, let's use a dynamic programming formula. Here's the idea. For any amount i, we look at each coin that's less than or equal to i. We try using that coin first, which leaves us with the remaining amount i minus coin. Then we ask, What's the minimum number of coins needed to make up that remaining amount? That's dpi minus coin. And since we just used one more coin, we add one to it. So the formula is dp of i equals the minimum of dp of i minus coin plus one for all coins where i minus coin is greater than or equal to zero. We try this for every coin and take the smallest result. That becomes the answer for dpi. Let's walk through an example. DP5. We want to find the minimum coins needed to make five. Try using a one coin, then we need to solve DP4, which we already know is two. So total coins, two plus one equals three. Try using a two coin, five minus two equals three. DP3 is two. Again, two plus one equals three. Try using a five coin, five minus five equals zero. DP0 is zero. So zero plus one equals one coin total. The minimum of three, three, and one is one. So DP5 equals one. 
Same process for DP6. Use a 1 coin, 6 minus 1 equals 5. DP5 is 1, so total is 1 plus 1 equals 2. Use a 2 coin, 6 minus 2 equals 4. DP4 is 2, total is 2 plus 1 equals 3. Use a 5 coin, 6 minus 5 equals 1. DP1 is 1, total is 1 plus 1 equals 2. Minimum is 2, so DP6 equals 2. And that's how we go, filling in the table one cell at a time, building on previous results. That's the beauty of dynamic programming. We reuse smaller solutions to solve bigger problems. Eventually, we reach DP11, and we find it equals 3, meaning the minimum number of coins to make 11 is 3. Now that we have the logic, here's how we can translate that into Python code. First, if the amount is less than 1, just return 0. Then, create a DP array of length amount plus 1. Set every entry to infinity, except DP0 equals 0. Now, loop from 1 to the target amount. For each value of i, go through all the coin denominations. If the coin is less than or equal to i, try using that coin, and update DP of i by checking DP of i minus coin plus 1. Finally, check if DP amount is still infinity. If so, return minus 1. Otherwise, return DP amount. The time complexity is big O of n times amount, where n is the number of coin denominations, and the space complexity is big O of amount. Pretty efficient. Since this is a dynamic programming problem, there's also a top-down solution using recursion. The idea is simple. For a given amount, try each coin, and recursively compute the fewest coins needed for the remaining amount, then return the minimum. If the amount is zero, return zero. If it's negative, return minus one to indicate failure. This approach is clean and intuitive, but it has one big drawback. It keeps recalculating the same subproblems over and over again. For example, you might end up solving for nine, eight, or five more than once. To fix that, we can use a classic DP trick, memoization. Just store results as we go. We create a memo dictionary, and every time we compute the answer for a specific amount, we store it. If we see that amount again, we just return the cached result. With memoization, the top-down solution becomes almost as fast as the bottom-up version, and it's still easy to write and understand. So to wrap things up, why is CoinChange a textbook dynamic programming problem? First, it has overlapping subproblems. You solve the same subgoals, like making eight or six, multiple times. Second, it has optimal substructure. The best way to make 11 coins depends on the best ways to make smaller amounts, like 10, 9, or 6. If the subsolutions are optimal, the whole solution is optimal. Because of these two properties, dynamic programming is the perfect approach for this problem. And that's it for today's video. I hope this helped you understand both the coin change problem and the power of dynamic programming. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share it with your fellow interview preppers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.